Hello friends and welcome to Fauna Disc Golf. We are today in the studio because we begin a series of video tutorials to talk about the science that is behind the flight of a disc. There is a lot of myths out there and a lot of half-truths and we are going to try to explain the flight of a disc from a pure physic perspective. We're going to begin with the easier case on, from a pure ballistic throw in the, in the vacuum and we're going to incorporate everything that is around the real throw of a disc, like the biomechanics, the limitations of our body, and of course the aerodynamics, all the forces that a uh, disc receives for the fact of traveling through the, through the air. Uh, we're gonna follow the, the famous scheme of the four flight numbers, and we're gonna try to incorporate all that information to understand exactly why does the, the disc behave like that, why the turn, why the fade, and we will end up with some appendixes with uh, some extra information about uh, the importance of the, the weight of a disc, the temperature, the humidity, why does it really uh, influences the, the flight of a disc. Uh, so let's begin with the easier case. Let's suppose that we are on the moon and we're gonna make the, the first frisbee throw in the moon ever and we want to reach as far as possible. Uh, do you remember, maybe you studied it at school, uh, which angle should we choose to throw our disc if there is no air resistance to get the maximum distance? Yeah, that's it. It's 45 degrees. Maybe you, you remember if you are on a horizontal plane, 45 degrees is the optimum angle to, to reach the, the farther possible. If you throw any higher, the problem is that you'll get a lot of height, but the, the disc will fall at your feet very close. And if you throw any lower, you will get a lot of distance, but the problem is that you will reach the, the, uh, the ground very soon and you will not be able to, to reach as far as if you choose that uh, 45 degree angle. Uh, now we will begin to adjust this information. The first little thing is that we are not really, really throwing from the ground. Uh, we are throwing from our height. Maybe our hand is let's say one and a half meters high. So when you throw horizontal, you're really throwing downhill one and a half meters of negative slope. No? So the optimum angle would not be 45, but a, a little bit less, no? maybe, maybe 44 degrees, something like this. No? Um, and then we should incorporate the biomechanic. Uh, when we throw with, a, let's say, with a cannon, and you put a cannonball on a cannon, and you put, uh, you throw, you you fire it, and you throw the ball, uh, you can choose whichever angle you want, and the efficiency of the cannon is always the same. You can shoot at 90 degrees or at zero degrees, and the efficiency is always the same. But when we throw with our body, our body has some a skeleton, some muscles, some joints, uh, and we are not as efficient in all the angles. If we throw an extreme spike hyzer and we throw 70 degrees uh, from the horizontal, we are not able to throw um, with uh, the same strength, with the same power as, with, as if we throw on horizontal on a zero degrees throw. No? Uh, there is a well-known case which is the, the shot pot, which is an Olympic discipline which has been excessively uh, studied for decades. Um, uh, you, you could think that, okay, they, they throw a 7 kilo uh, cannonball, <laughs> uh, they throw it some 20 meters away, so the, the speed is quite low. We could even neglect the aerodynamic defects because they are very small. So from a pure ballistic point of view, we should throw the, the ball at 45 degrees or 44 if we take account the, the height of the thrower. Uh, there has been many studies about that and one of them showed uh, the, all the, the 10 best uh, shot pots uh, throws on the history and, they, and their throwing angle was always around 37 degrees. So it's not 45, it's 37. What does it mean? That uh, It means that if you throw at 45 degrees you are optimizing the ballistic part of the flight uh, but you are not able to throw as hard as if you throw at uh, let's say 30 degrees. In that case you will throw very hard but the problem is that the ballistic uh, will be very poor and your ball will throw 
uh, soon to the ground. So by a trial and error uh, process they have found that something around 37 degrees is the sweet spot uh, between that ballistic uh, optimization and the biomechanical optimization. So we will try to apply this uh, approach to all the everything related to the to the disc uh, throw, and we will try to really fully understand the flight of of our disc. So see you here in Fauna Disc Golf.